currently monitor with St. Paul Ramsey County Public Health and um, May is Mental Health Awareness Month and Ramsey County Public Health and Social Service are um, partnering to host Facebook live streams to promote awareness of mental health and well-being. Mental health is a widespread um, health problem and it impacts everyone, no matter age, income, race, ethnicity, or gender. And right now with, in, with COVID-19, um, mental health is super important and um, we would like to provide those resources and services to those who are in need. Um, so today we have um, Jamie Jackson with the crisis service team um, sharing some information about um, mental health and just kind of a chance to um, open this conversation and answer any questions that people might have around mental health. So welcome Jamie. Um, if you want to introduce your name and um, I mean your name and um, who you are and what you do. Thank you, Kari, and thanks to Public Health for hosting these really important events. Um, well, this is Mental Health Awareness Month. Every month in our world is mental health awareness, and so thanks for having us. Um, <clears throat> my name is Jamie Jackson. I am the current supervisor of the Adult Crisis Response Team for Ramsey County. Um, I'm also, at, we're located at 402 University Avenue East in St. Paul. In our office, we're really kind of a special building, but we have both the adult and children's crisis response teams located here, as well as the adult and children's crisis stabilization teams. We um, are a multidisciplinary team comprised of social workers, counselors, family therapists, chemical health counselors, and, and nurses, as well as peers and mental health practitioners. And our goal is really to provide service to adults and children in Ramsey County or those who are in crisis who are physically within the boundaries of Ramsey County. Thanks for having me. Great. So um, as I mentioned, we're going to just answer some common questions that people have. So how is mental illness defined by your team? Well, we kind of look at mental illness um, as a medical condition that typically um, when symptoms are high, disrupts a person's thinking, feeling, moods, um, and ability to connect with others and their daily functioning. Uh, we view mental illness as very common. Um, typically, one in four people in their lives experience a mental illness. And so we, um, we see a wide variety. Um, we don't uh, kind of view it as imaginary or a character flaw. We view it as a medical condition. And that being said, that is a medical condition, it's very treatable. So we view mental illness as um, treated effectively with support, whether that's medication, therapeutic support, um, diet, exercise, connection with others um, in the community, in their home, in their schools, in um, churches and religious organizations and within like cultural support networks. So we believe that recovery is possible. Tell me, what are the causes of mental illness and what signs should we look for? Okay, thanks. Yeah, we, uh, there's a, a lot of literature on what might cause mental illness, but typically when in our experience in crisis services, what we see most often um, are um, the, the causes are a lot of times related to trauma. Um, sometimes traumatic events can really trigger, um, kind of trigger symptoms. Um, there's also a lot uh, uh, to be said about chemical imbalance, that there are chemical and biochemical changes um, in the brain, and that can really play a role. Um, there's potentially a genetic, a genetic component, um, wherein that some uh, we see mental health issues that run in families. So a lot of times we talk with uh, um, people who call in about their family of origin and what um, they might have experienced as uh, in have experienced in their lives. Um, and then there's always the environmental component, which is um, what people are exposed to. Um, have they been ill in their life? Yeah, are chemical health uh, playing a role, a drug or alcohol use, and, and the development of the brain in, in utero? So those are some causes. Um, and what well, we we ask about that. We talk about that. Really, what we hope for when people call us and what we talk about is not to be so complex, but to just say what's going on with your person and you, the person that you care about, or that you're calling about. What changes in behavior are they like? Are they seeing? And 
because we work with children and adults, those things can be very different. What we see for kids, for example, because they're still developing in their brain and learning um, about thoughts and feelings and communication, that oftentimes what we hear from families is that there's a lot of behavioral changes and a lot of behavioral issues. Um, kind of some examples of that, I'm, I'm going to use my um, Chi here, but like changes in school performance. And now that COVID's happening, it could be complications with distance learning. Um, maybe there's excessive worries or anxieties uh, communicated by the child. Maybe they are of, like fighting to avoid school or of fighting to avoid routines that they're normally uh, used to and, and hadn't fought in the past. Um, some kids experience hyperactive behavior. Um, others, frequent nightmares. Um, a lot of families talk about kids who are not following the rules or disobedient, and, and maybe they are also more aggressive or acting out. Um, and we see a kind of an increase in temper tantrums with kids. Um, the important thing is that we're looking for the difference in what the family is experiencing and how they view their child and how their child is behaving differently. So that's really important. For adults, typically, uh, we could see a variety of symptoms, but a lot of times the changes are the person's more confused. Um, there's been some extreme mood changes um, in or behavior changes. Um, maybe that looks like uncontrollable highs or uncontrollable lows. Um, the, the feelings might be prolonged, so they might be going on longer than usual. So they might be more irritable or angry for longer periods. A avoidance and isolation is a huge uh, symptom that we, we see. Um, are, are people not seeing their friends and family? Are they um, staying isolated in their space, in their rooms? Um, and then there are things like excessive use of alcohol or drugs more than normal. Um, it could look like multiple uh, report of physical ailments or aches and pains that don't really um, have an origin that anyone knows about. Um, more high risk symptoms could look like um, perception or when a person start, uh, has a hard time perceiving reality. Maybe they're having delusional beliefs or they're hallucinating. Um, they're seeing things or hearing things that other people don't see or can't make sense of. Um, and then finally, with adults, but also with children, at any point a person has thoughts to harm themselves or others. That's a, a clear sign. Um, a, a warning sign and things to look for for families. You mentioned that like um, if a person's behavior is different from their normal side self, that's kind of a crisis. How does your team define crisis? Is that some mm -hmm. a role? Yeah, I, mean, I think objectively as a community, we can say, you know, when a person's going to hurt themselves or someone else, that is a crisis. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's aside. Our teams tend to view crisis, though, as from the eyes of the individual. So what might be a crisis for you or me is different, but they're, uh, no matter what, it's to be treated seriously. So essentially what we um, want to communicate to the public is that uh, the crisis is in the eye of the beholder. And um, when kids are in crisis or parents are in crisis, the family is typically in crisis. And that we don't require specific things before we get involved. We actually prefer to work with people before the crisis escalates to the point where the family system is really um, struggling or uh, where they're, the person's at risk of intervention, whether that be from law enforcement um, through, uh, you know, something happening in the home or um, high level care like hospitalization or corrections. Like that's one form of treatment, but we want to get ahead of it before it, it happens. We want to make sure people stay supported in their community, that they are um, able to access resources from their home um, and do so in a voluntary way. So we we do really prefer that people call us. It doesn't have to be a crisis. And what can people expect when they call you? Like, um, how are how do you provide services? Well, we primarily like the two main way that people access our services is that we have a 24 hour, 365 day a year phone line for both children's crisis and adult crisis. And so a lot of times people do just call mm -hmm. um, you when you do call, you can expect to talk to a human being. We don't have automated answers. Um, if you 
other than if the, the agents are all busy at one time, you might get a little message saying, hey, thanks for calling, but um, please hold. Um, so that you would have access to a mental health practitioner or professional, um, and they can expect that we will listen to what they have to say, um, kind of ask direct questions, um, some identifying information. We really want to be respectful and, and use people's names as they wish to be called. We also, um, because it, it, things can escalate quickly, we want to make sure that sometimes we're able to act, get to the person. We primarily serve Ramsey County residents, but if you're physically in the boundaries of Ramsey County, we are your crisis program. If you were calling from out state, we would quickly get you connected with the team that would be closest to your home. They can expect that we'll ask pointed questions, provide psychoeducation, um, and primary and connection to resources um, that make the most sense for their needs, um, but also make the most sense for their um, spiritual and cultural and language needs. And Jamie, right now with COVID-19 and the stay at home, are the, are the services that your team provides, is that available right now? And how yeah. does that look like? Absolutely. The phone lines are open, still answered. We also provide both in-office assessment at 402 and also community mobile assessment. So typically, Additionally, people can expect that we do ask questions about COVID symptoms. Um, we also, as before we come out to homes, we do really take seriously the need to keep people safe. Um, we don't want to make anyone ill. Um, we do wear protective clothing or masks and gloves, you know, if we come out to the home. Um, and we offer that to clients as well if they were, would need. We do have some um, connection with those kinds of uh, supports. But um, yeah, we are, we're still operating almost as normal um, with the exception that we do that extra screening. Um, we are focused more on connecting people within the community and trying to prevent higher level care, um, our unnecessary use of ERs um, be because of the, the strain on the system right now. I should also say, I forgot to mention Kari, but if people don't speak English, um, that's okay. We can still serve them. We, our brochures that we have are, are written in a variety of languages and we can make sure to mail those out to anyone that might need them. But also if a person is calling and English is not their first language, we have staff on hand that do speak uh, language like Hmong, Spanish. We also have an Arabic speaker on the children's team. And then if there's other languages, because Ramsey County is so diverse with so many different groups and language needs, we just would require the person to just be able to say the language that they speak. Then we will get a phone interpreter. If we need to do face-to-face -face assessments, we do our best to have a, an interpreter on hand as well. Great, that's really good. Um, and how do you know that all your services are successful? You know, we look at recovery very broadly and typically, we do believe that if we connect people with our services, which include the crisis assessment and referrals, or we have refers to stabilization services, that we can really help people within four to six weeks to kind of either get back to previous crisis level uh, of functioning, or we make some real strides in connecting people with ongoing care. Um, so because we're recovery oriented, it's really the individual that sees um, the change. We hope that we're successful if we're able to help people stay in their homes. Um, that's adults and kids that we're able to connect them with providers to treat the symptoms um, in the most responsible way that we can. And then we really can consider it a success if we can avoid high level restrictive care, um, such as hospitals. And um, so it's it's important to us that we we work with the families, we work with individuals um, to try to see what their goals are for recovery and, and strive to meet those. Well, thank you, Jamie, for taking time to do this stream and providing um, very useful information and resources. Before we end this, um, are there any other options of support available? And can you share the number of um, the crisis line? Absolutely. Um, I will actually even um, send, there's, there's a number with COVID um, happening that we have a number of extra supports. So um, we have the children, the adults at 266-7900, and we have children's at 266-7878. 
Um, with embedded within our team right now, we have um, what's called the mental health first aid line. And so these are uh, people that are answering calls that are just support needs, maybe not crisis, but you can also get that uh, service at if you just call these two numbers. Um, there's text lines. So if texting is your mode of communication and you need help or you're not able to call, but you can text, um, we'll make sure to have this information included uh, under the video. And there's a number of warm lines and other supports um, in the community, uh, Minnesota, and I have my papers, but so I'll just keep it uh, written for everyone. But we do hope that people reach out if they need. And um, we, we have reason to support each other during this very difficult time. The challenges that we're seeing right now is related to isolation and lack of connection. So if there's anything that we can do to facilitate connection for people who are needing it, we can do that. Um, we really hope that the public will take advantage of these great services that people have worked really hard to create during this really um, this interesting and terrible time. Well, thank you, Jamie. Bye. Thank you. Appreciate you, Kari, and Public Health. Thank you so much for including us in this Mental Health Awareness Month um, program. Okay. All right. So